Welcome to Los Championship Rounds. This is episode 10. I am your host, Juan Ramirez. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Cutman for Hire Supplies. <laughs> Bloody face, no problem. Uh, today's guest, our very special guest is professional cut woman, uh, Carol. And let me, uh, let, let, correct me if I, if I uh, mispronounce uh, your last name, but it's Sarah Q. Q, sir? Sarah? Yes, yes. Sarah Q, sir. All right, here we go. So, um, thank you. Um, in, the, in the boxing MMA world, you're known as Carol the Cut Woman. So that's how most of us um, uh, know you. But um, I, I want to say, you know, welcome and thank you for thank taking you. Um, time out of your day to, uh, to join, join us here at Los Championship Rounds. How's your day going? It's going great. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. And it's, it's nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, Carol, I want to start off. Um, how did you get started in, in, in this, in the, in the cut, cut man, cut woman profession? Um, what, what, what was, uh, what got you started in this? Well, initially, um, it was my father being um, a boxer when he was young. And so I grew up watching boxing throughout my life. And um, I wanted to become a boxer myself. So as I was training to do that, I had some medical problems that was preventing me from being able to um, professionally be, become a fighter. So with that, it turned into um, becoming a coach. I was a, a boxing trainer. I, was, I still am a boxing trainer. And then throughout the years of all the years in the gyms, um, you know, it just, nobody really wanted to handle any of the cuts or the bleeding or the bloody noses or swelling or anything. So I just took it upon myself to just take care of the fighters, um, you know, just on my own. And, you know, it just, it became second nature for me. And it's really important to take care of the fighters and, and their safety is the priority. So that's pretty much how the cut business came into my life, um, was through, through the gyms and with the fighters. Okay, where, where are you, um, where did this begin? Was it up in Northern Cali or what part of? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it was Northern Cali. I, I live in uh, the East Bay. And, um, but most of the work that I have is generally in the Central Valley, 209, throughout the Central Valley, all the way to Fresno, as far as my backyard, even though it's not my backyard. It's, you know, Fresno is like two and a half hours away. And I would, I would drive that a couple of days a week, just one way. So round trip, it's like five hours. So I would do that a couple of days a week or train, uh, you know, in Turlock. And that was, you know, about an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes. So, you know, you have to be pretty dedicated if you're going to put that kind of time in just in, just on the road, just to get there. And that's a good point. Um, you know, that you bring up, cause a lot of people think that all of a sudden you show up on combate or you show mm -hmm. up at Bellator, or you show up on mm -hmm. top rank. But they don't right. see, um, like you, you're talking about, you know, all those road, you know, those, uh, those miles you put in your car, those late right. nights. Because a lot of times I, I can imagine, I can speak for myself, and you can, uh, you know, uh, chime in this. Um, you didn't get hotels, you know, like, oh, you're going to spend the night here. We're going to take care of you. It was like, go do the show, and you got to drive back. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How was that, that journey? I mean, because that's a, that's a grind. Yeah, it, it is a grind. Um, and I did it for many years. So, you know, for me, um, I have a passion for the for the sport, you know, for boxing, MMA, for combat sports. So I just do whatever I need to do to be where I need to be and, and do what I love. So for me, that was, you know, basically starting out having to drive quite far. And, you know, then I take, you know, take the time to, you know, train the fighters, get to know the fighters, um, the coaches, but basically it wasn't really, you know, always, you know, just a drive. I mean, it took many years to, you know, just due to me being a woman, it took many years for me to go into many different gyms where they would immediately trust me or anything like that. It took time to earn their trust and for them to realize, you know, that I have I have skills and I can take, you know, I can back it up, you know? So it's basically when you go to different gyms and they don't know you, they just see a female walking in. It's, it takes a while to earn their trust and, and their respect. And so. That, that's a good point. And that was one, but that was my next question was some of the challenges, uh, and, you know, and I don't want to bring that up, 
but I, it must be a challenge on being, you know, being a woman in a, in this, you know, in, in this combat sports, it's not, you don't see many, uh, you know, female cut woman, uh, trainers, mm-hmm. even though, you know, we know that there's, a, there, there's, they're, they're out there, but we don't see a lot. So how, what were some of the challenges? You mentioned a few of them. Did that discourage you at times or did it just give you more of a drive? More of a drive. Yeah. It did not discourage me. Um, I just made sure, you know, I basically paid my dues and uh, earned everybody's trust and their respect. And it, like I said, it took years to do that. And that was by proving myself. And I don't want to say it's 100% because I was a woman. Um, You know, it's just who I am as a person. But when you are in a male dominated sport and you're surrounded by nothing but, you know, men or young men and, and uh, no women around, you know, it, it's like I had to prove myself and, and that's what I did. And I'm okay with that. Um, it was never, you know, that's a challenge. I like challenges, you know, um, I like to prove people wrong. So nothing's going to stop me from where I want to go or what I want to achieve. Um, it's, you know, it, it's when I have a passion and I, I dedicate myself to something, I do it 150%, you know, mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not going nowhere. (laughs) Like you said, um, this is something that you have a passion for. So as long as it takes, you're still having fun and you're enjoying what you do. So Mm -hmm. that's, it's, those are the best type of journeys. I I, I can, you know, say when you, you love what you do. So, um, absolutely. Were there any, uh, any mentors, anybody that inspired you, um, when you were getting involved with, uh, in, in boxing MMA? Well, as I said, initially my father and he continues to inspire me. Um, and of course, you know, when I started to do it professionally, um, I was working with Candyman. And so I want to give a shout out to Candyman for, for taking me under his wing and um, getting me into Combate Americas. Um, and so I was doing shows with him and, you know, he taught me the ropes as far as, you know, how, how to operate within the professional um, environment, um, you know, when you have camera, TV cameras and you have, you know, a bunch of fighters on one show. Um, and so it, it was a big help and I appreciate that. And, you know, he's, he's my number one guy guy that I've had that I'm going to have forever. He's like family. So that's something that I, I definitely, he was, he's a mentor and, and somebody that inspired me. Um, and of course, all the other cut men out there, you know, all the top cut men, you, yourself, Stitch and Mike Rodriguez, he's, he's helped me out a lot. And, and I go to him a lot for advice and he mentors me. Um, so, and, you know, Mike Basil, you know, it, it's, I've for many years have just watched what all of you do. And I've paid very close attention to, uh, you know, very tedious, you know, meticulous and to where I pay very close attention to what each cut man does, how they do it. So I learned something from each and every one. So that's pretty much where I am today. I, I've taken a little bit from everyone and I have my own style and I have my own little things that I do. Um, but it's a combination of something that I've gained from, from each one of you in, in the business. No, no, no. That, that's a good point. And, and likewise, I mean, we learn, I always learn from, from other cut man, um, you know, cut woman. I mean, it's something that we, we can't stop learning. There's always something, mm-hmm. a little trick, a little, mm-hmm. uh, we got to keep that open mind because we always have you know room to learn learn more absolutely i mean i learn something every day every day there's something i learn different it's like wow i should have known that and it just you know finally clicks and it's like wow you know it could be the smallest thing but that small thing can be become a big thing yes yes and i think you know um a lot of boxers or even in mma uh you know just fighters in general when they get an experience uh you know cut woman cut man in that corner i mean you bring a lot of experience not only with uh, with the cuts but just like you said about the game about you mm-hmm. know, how things work how it's all yes. systems you know it's all like you know whether it be the camera whether it be playing to the crowd you know all mm-hmm. those little tips that that you can give them i mean they make them you know uh, it makes a difference and i think yes. um, we bring a lot i mean you bring a lot to the table thank you those experiences that, that you've had you know and, and, and thank you like, I remember um, interviewing or talking to Rob Monroe from the UFC once, and he said that they, you know, they see, they've seen so much and they've experienced so much that it's just, you know, it's just something that it's just some other day at the office, you know. Exactly. Yeah. 
it's not exactly like, you know um it's not like something that's new new to us so i was even <laughs> talking to, to brian yano he works a lot of events with me and we're like i was telling him like you know what cut cut man cut woman i think we're a special breed you know yeah see a lot of stuff that uh a normal i you know i'm not gonna say we're not normal but a normal <laughs> person might be like damn you know but we're seeing a little bit of everything and we can you know we 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 handle it you know yeah exactly it, we, we stay calm mm -hmm. and, um, it's just interesting you know that that i think we have something something special about about um you know about us this profession yeah not everybody i don't think would want to do it number one and you know it takes a lot of years of, of hard work and dedication to learn the craft and um you know and to stay with it and to make sure that you are doing what's right by you know by the fighter and and the coach and making sure that you're you're doing your job and uh you know one thing i can say is that i basically i work both in both boxing and mma so that has helped me a lot to get where I am because just by working in the MMA, that alone, you know, has like, you know, in a very short time, you know, you you learn to to you learn your craft because of the fact that there's you're guaranteed to have some kind of cut or, you know, abrasion or bloody nose or something in almost every single round or every fight within the MMA. And so I've been able to in a very short time be able to kind of you know uh improve my my skills and and be where i am today that, that's so a, that's a great point because um i mean working on mma shows whether it be amateur or pro mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. guarantee like you said that and you learn you know even the hand wrapping you learn yeah. quick and good and, right uh, you don't got to spend an hour to wrap somebody's hands because you know when you have a line of 15 other dudes i want to get wrapped up <laughs> You're like, yeah. you learn, you know, speed and, and all that stuff. So right. It is. Um, and then Stitch mentioned that in one of the interviews we did was um, when he when he brings people on board, whether it be for top rank or some of the uh -huh. he works with, he looks at cut, cut man, cut woman that have MMA experience. Oh, so, OK, that's that's so good. Much, you know, we, we've been in the trenches a lot more than somebody that right. one or two fights a year. You know, yeah. You, you know, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, one show, one show, you get like 15 fights or 12 fights or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's just in one day, one you know, day, or one night. So, right. You know, I was thinking about like, you know, um, what is it, box rec? They have yeah. stats on, you know, boxers, of course. I think refs have stats. They should start oh. keeping stats on cut, man. You no know, kidding. Fights you, you work, That's right. You know, oh, that would be great. You know, we worked a lot of rounds and uh, fights, you know, it's just. Exactly. You just stop. Yeah, you know, keeping track of them so many. That mm -hmm. they, not to mention, oh, you know, the hand. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was gonna say not to mention that you know there is a difference, obviously, not just in the frequency of the cuts within MMA, but you know their hand wraps are definitely different. You have less knuckle padding. You know, you got to make sure that you you they have the ability to to grab or you know they're it's not like a real tight wrap like as in boxing. You know, because you have grapplers and you have people that are you know jujitsu and things like that. So it's important that you know obviously you you know the difference. Uh, between the hand wraps if this is what you're going to do yeah, and, and, and you get to see so many different hand styles hands some people have you know bony hands uh-huh some people have forearms that you can't even put i know on it because it just keeps rolling down i mean uh -huh. you get to see it all and and but it's good it's good experience good experience mm -hmm. and you get to see a little bit of everything so oh no that's uh, yeah you know that's a it's a good thing like like stitch said working those mma uh events uh -huh. a lot of knowledge to us so yeah definitely the first uh event you work whether it be professional or or, or maybe yeah professional or amateur uh, whether it be amateur mma or did you recall the first one you did um yeah i i actually was training um the uh, amateur fighters when i first started and so you know i would go to the nationals with the fighters i would go to the um junior olympics um and you know travel with them so that's kind of where it started but professionally um was a heavyweight fight in um i want to say uh, where is it huntington no not huntington beach wherever the queen mary is it was on the queen mary long so beach. Long beach, uh, palm beach okay so that oh, no, long, that's where long beach. long beach yeah long beach that's right 
Long Beach. So that was the the first professional fight um, that I did, uh, and it was it was actually very exciting, and it was televised, and you know, so it was it was really great, and I you know it just felt natural to me, you know, re- whether it's considered professional or you have, like I said, TV cameras or anything, I, I just block all that out. I just do what my job is to take care of the fighter. And so that was in boxing. And I've been able to, you know, deal with the same thing at, ongoing with, um, you know, boxing and MMA as far as the professional side. So that's something to me that just comes second nature. I don't, I don't, you know, pay attention to all the other stuff that's going on around me or hearing people scream or anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. How, how do you, how do you get to that point? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if the first fight was any different from your last fight, but, you know, I think some people have trouble blocking, blocking all that out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, what, what tips would you give somebody, you know, to uh, maybe starting, uh, you know, how mm-hmm. to get, get that out of, uh, get that out of your, your mind and just focus on what you're there for, you know, get that tunnel vision. If you, if you, right. Well, you know, I mean, it's just the individual, um, you know, I, I suggest just, you know, make sure that you just, you're just focused on what your job is and stay focused on the fighter and make sure that you, you know, continue to, to, to do that, not, not allow any outside um, chatter or noise or sound or anything like that. Um, allow you to get distracted because if you're distracted, then you're not able to, you know, do your job correctly or, you know, uh, you're not doing any service to the fighter. Um, but another thing too is making sure that your corner, that the people that you're working with, the, the other coach or the first assist, the second, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you work well together, that you flow. And that takes time though. It doesn't happen immediately and it takes time working with a particular team multiple times to finally get things to flow with in the corner. You know, someone's got the stool, someone's got the water, you know, the cameraman's in the way, you can't get up the stairs because they're blocking the corner, you know, things like that. But that eventually, you know, you get that worked out. Um, so as time goes on, it doesn't matter who, who I work with, um, what corner it is, it, it just, it's almost like um, you don't even have to discuss anything if you are all professional and you have experience working corners. So, um, but I would, no, that's I would just point. recommend that people just just can stay focused, stay focused, okay. and and worry about and, and do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that, and I'm glad you brought up the point of you know of of, of everybody remaining professional mm-hmm. and knowing. I mean, you know, knowing their role and also knowing that you know you as 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 a cut woman are there to assist the fight mm-hmm. you're not trying to get nobody spotlight you don't want to you know, get, you, you're just there to have that goal to get that you know like they say you know give them a, another round and get them through that fight i think um at times i mean i've seen it where uh, you know they don't let you do your job you know because they they i don't know what it is you know maybe they're like they want to be the center of attention if, at, at times um but i think like you mentioned you know having that conversation Maybe before the fight, look, if, if there's a cut, uh, is it cool if I go in there? You know, it's easier for me. Mm-hmm. To work. I'm having that, I think, gets everybody on the same point, and then they get to know that. Yeah, that's a good point that you mentioned, though, is making sure that you have a conversation with with the team or with the corner and making sure that you know what each role is. And, and if something were to happen, this is what's going, you know, how it's going to go down or how you're going to handle it. Yeah. So that's a, a very important thing to do is making sure you're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, it usually takes, I know, um, you know, at times you, you're at an event and they hire you on the spot mm-hmm. and you don't, you've never worked with that fight. So it does take maybe, you know, one or two rounds to, to get into yeah. with everybody. Um, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are hard. I mean, I don't know if, if at times I don't like doing those a lot, my personally, just because, you know, if I'm there with a fighter, I like to focus on them, but uh, at times, you know, you, you want to help out as well, but mm-hmm. those are a little bit rough, you know, it's kind of like you, like, those are tough how do you feel about those I mean do you get a lot of those or how do you handle um I I've gotten uh quite a few of those yes and you know because you're there with you know one one fighter or two fighters and then you pick up a few more fights while you're there um and I you know I feel good about that because it allows me to help other people that may not have somebody to you know help them in the corner um so for me I just pretty much 
kind of just think more about the fact that they're, they need me and that's what I'm there for, whether, you know, I'm there with my own fighter or not. Um, providing that it doesn't, you know, interfere with Correct. my job there, my, you know, which is with, with my fighter or the fight, the team that I'm with, once that's taken care of, you know, then, then I'm, you know, it's okay to, you know, help other people out that needs it. Um, and I try to just, like I said, you know, have a conversation with them right prior to the fight, just very quickly. And just so maybe they understand where, how I operate or, you know, if they have a question or I have a question, then we kind of get it out of the way instead of waiting till you're in the middle of the fight. And, yeah. you know, things are, you're not all on the same page. So that's very important. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's true. What, um, I, mean, I know you work with Candyman, right? You guys have worked Combate. How was that experience working Combate? I mean, um, I don't know if you guys did the show, if it was in Florida or in Texas or, but how was that? How, how was it being on, on, on and I, I believe you, you can, if you want to talk about other, you know, I think you've done Bellator as well. Mm -hmm. Just talking yes. about, you know, working in those big stages. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, it was a great experience. And, um, you know, I, obviously when you work a show, you, you were, you know, working every single fight. And, and that was a very uh, good thing to build rapport with the fighters, because then the next time you have another show, they might fight again, or you see them at another fight. So you're, you know, you start building relationships and, and um, with all the different fighters and the different teams as, as time goes on. But it was a really great experience because, you know, I, actually that's where I pretty much started in the MMA. I mean, uh, where it just went straight to, you know, TV time and camera and dealing with all of that. And, you know, kind of, you know, maybe the first show I was a little kind of nervous, you know, not, you know, you kind of have to kind of get the feel like how things operate, how they operate. Right. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, fights in Fresno, LA, uh, Stockton. Um, but when COVID hit, uh, it, they went to Florida. So they're still in Florida and I, they're still in um, like no audience. The studio, yeah. It's, yeah, it's in a studio. Um, and they, you know, they use their local cut people or you know coaches to um do you know be a cut man or what candy man and i were were doing so um you know but that was really a great experience and they were it's a good organization it's now uh, combate global oh, yeah. um yeah so um you know it was great for me because that that also helped kind of build my confidence as far as dealing with the mma yeah, professionally yeah. so um I'm very thankful for that. And, um, you know, and it, it's had me, you know, give me a chance to travel, um, you know, but boxing's given me a chance to travel as well. You know, I've worked with uh, fighters where I've gone to the UK um, and, you know, Texas and um, LA and, you know, Tennessee and things like that. So I, I enjoy travel. So it, it doesn't bother me. It's fun, right? I mean, you get to yeah. see places that you know maybe you 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 were never gone to certain cities mm -hmm. you know, like I vegas I, I enjoy going to vegas and, and you know for fights there and things like that it's always exciting is this something um that you do uh, most of the time i mean is this like a full-time thing or do you have something else like a, another job or is this something that you mm -hmm. dedicate uh, most of your time to I dedicate most of my time to this and whether, you know, it's, um, being a trainer or, you know, cut, cut work. And, um, but pretty much, you know, most of the time it's, uh, starting to be, you know, it's become just mostly just the cut work. I mean, I'm focusing on getting more work and working with more fighters and setting up more shows. Um, you know, I don't just do the big stuff. I do, I do, you know, more, I do local shows as well, you know, um, with, you know, smaller promoters that might just be getting started and, and help them out. Um, you know, so it's like, I'm, I can be, I become like more of a, like a house cut woman for some of those shows, you know, there's, um, two and I beat down, which is here in the central Valley. Um, that's a, you know, a really great show. And there's a one combat that's Uriah Faber's, oh, yeah, um, that. that's show. That's yeah, that's, that's yeah, new. that's new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's new. I've, I've worked a few shows. They've had about four or five shows, but then um, it's it's now form. It's like mm -hmm. officially now Uriah Faber's A1 Combat and they're out of Stockton. And um, they actually just signed with UFC um, 
for multiple you know deals or shows um, on the UFC Fight Pass. Yeah. So that just was announced the other day. So um, and I'm their house cut person. So that's you know it, it's a great feeling to be able to help out um, people that are in my general area as well. Oh yeah, yeah. and I think um, we got to stay busy. I mean, in this sport, yeah, you have to stay in the trenches. You know, it's something mm-hmm. that um, being out there just it helps us grow professionally. <laughs> Uh, as that's well, right we keep our tools sharp um so mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm with you you know we do local shows here usa boxing we still go out yeah and support you know the, the youngsters and all that so it's good right it's a really, yeah. really good thing to um to continue to be in there and inspire i'm sure you inspire a lot of uh, you know other people that want to be uh you know do cut work or be mm-hmm. coaches i mean i'm sure you're an inspiration to to the youth as well so Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I, I do hear that from people and it makes me feel really good to know that I'm, that I can inspire people. And um, I've been through a lot in my life and I've overcome so many things and I've had also so many setbacks. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor. I'm a heart attack survivor and a stroke survivor. So that alone has kind of prepared me for other things in life that may, made me realize that, you know, Life is short and, um, you know, it's, you're never promised tomorrow. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, go after your dreams and, and your goals and, and never give up, never give up. And that's what I, you know, I never gave up and I, I continue to keep moving forward and, and to strive to be the best at what I, what I can be as a person. Um, and it's not necessarily just, you know, people say that it's, oh, you're a woman and, and things like that, but it's, you know, I've had talks with you know the youth and um whether it's young girls or just just the youth period and it's a a great feeling to think that I can help them um learn how to try to overcome things and and to stay positive and to never give up and then uh, same thing with just anybody in life it doesn't have to be the youth um when you go through a lot and you've had setbacks it's like I'm I feel like I'm here for a reason God kept me here for a reason and you know, so I just continue to strive to, to keep going and reach, reach those, those goals. You know, I want to be at the top. I want to be with all you guys that it's up at the top and make history. You know, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, to me, it's just important to, to achieve something and know that you worked hard for it and that, you know, um, people respect me for that. That your work is, yeah, exactly. You know, that your work is paying, paying off all those miles, all those late nights. Yeah. All those things, you know, sacrifice. I know we were yeah. talking to uh, Cut Man Al. I think you know Al Gamas. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just talking over the weekend about all the sacrifices you do, you know, in this business. It's show, you know, at the end of the day, it is it's show business, you know, entertainment business. Right. Um, but it is a lot of sacrifice on, on everybody that participates in it. You know, whether mm-hmm. it be missing holidays, birthdays, family events. Mm-hmm. It is, and it's because we have passion. We have the passion to well, absolutely these athletes you know mm-hmm. sometimes you look at the calendar and you're like oh i'm supposed to be there with this <laughs> and you know how much they depend on you right you're, you're, that, you're, good you're point there it could be the end of the world you know for them because you're you're always there you always yeah. wrap their hands you always uh-huh. take care of them you know so yeah you know it's, it's yeah that's a good feeling i mean i i get that a lot and that's what drives me to to continue to do this is you know it's very gratifying when you have worked with the fighter helped them wrap their hands or they had cuts and you took care of them it's like when they are very you know they're thanking me and they're so appreciative it's just such a good gratifying feeling and you know then the next time they fight they're like hey I need you there I need you there you know I they want me to wrap their hands again or they they just you know feel secure knowing that I'm in their corner in case they get cut or whatever it may be so that is to me worth everything, you know, for, as far as all the sacrifices that I've made, you know, there's so many things that I've done up until now that there were times I, you know, didn't even make any money. You know, it's just like, you just, I just was doing it out of passion and to uh, get experience and to, you know, obviously grow as a cut woman. And so those are the sacrifices I made, you know, long hours, long drives, no money, just taking the time to, to be where I need to be to take care of them. So it's, yeah. it's paid off, you know, it's allowed me to be where I am today. It, it teaches us a lot. 
You know, I remember um, you mentioned uh, Mike Rodriguez. I remember mm -hmm. working MMA show, amateur MMA shows with them. Uh, oh, really? San Diego from the border. I live close to the border here in TJ. Oh, okay. I would drive all the way up to um, uh, uh, past, I think it was past uh, Six Flags, past mm -hmm. that area. And we would work shows for like a hundred, you know, we'd make a hundred bucks. hundred bucks, know, yeah. You know, so, and I'm like, it probably was a hundred bucks just to get there. Or <laughs> I know, you know, it's already gas, spent in gas, right? Right, you know, but, yeah. but it was, you know, but that's the passion that you have, you know, for, for the sport mm -hmm. and stuff. And you're, you're out there. So, yeah, I remember Mike and I doing shows and we, I think we would, we would go to Burbank, <laughs> we would go out there and just, you know, but it's just part of paying dues, you know, it's part mm -hmm. of it. And, um you know, and, and helping me get to, you know, help out some of these fighters. I think in one of them, Ronda Rousey fought her first, but one of her amateur fights, MMA fights. Mm. Out there. So it was interesting, you know, that we were, I mean, we don't know who she was. I didn't really know who she was. At the time, <laughs> yeah. But we were in the same, you know, place. So, but, you know, to see these athletes, you know, grow and then you grow, see them, uh -huh. or you That's see right. them top rank, you see them fighting for titles. I mean, it's to be a part of that. It's, it's a great feeling. Great, great. Yeah, feeling. it really is. Uh, what do you have planned for 2022? What does 22, 2022 have in store for you? What, what are the goals or plans for this year? Um, just continue to stay busy and work as many shows as I can or, you know, working with more fighters as, you know, time goes on. Um, there are some fights that are coming up, you know, uh, in the, you know, for at least till the middle of the year um, or probably till about October, well, September. Um, so if I can just continue to just stay busy, that's, that's pretty much what my goal is. Um, but it's turning out pretty good, you know, I mean, being able to, to work with the local shows and, and pick up some more work with individual boxers and, and uh, fighters, that's, you know, it, that's pretty much where I'm at. And that's how, how I want it to continue. Um, except for, I'd like to, you know, pick up maybe a few world champions along oh, the way. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, that would be nice. Um, but it's also been a really, um, good experience working with not just the fighters, but with cut men such as yourself. I haven't worked with you directly, but you know, I've worked opposite corners of, of Mike Rodriguez. That was a great experience. And I've also worked the corner with, with Mike, you know, um, on a main event in, um, Minnesota. So, um, you know, he's the PBC house cut man. And so, you know, being able to work with him and uh, be on, you know, televised. I mean, that was, that was really a great experience for me because, you know, I, uh, he's also like a mentor to me as well. So that was a, a great feeling to, to experience. But, you know, I want to work more with people like yourself or Stitch or Mike Basil. I know I've shared the ring or the opposite corners of him um, multiple times in the past. Um, but it's always a good feeling to work with the best Definitely. in the, in the cut biz. Definitely. And uh, it, it's, that's a good, uh, that's a good point you bring up. I mean, you know, when you get to work with, with guys like Mike, both Mike's, you know, Basil, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Stitch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it just, Candy man. It, it's, yeah, you know, it's just, a, it is a good feeling, you know, to be there and, and to be like, man, you know what? I'm, yeah. I'm amongst, I'm amongst, you know, these guys yeah that, you know that i admire that i'm a fan i'm a fan of their right. work i'm sure you're a fan of some of their work as well you know I, I, yes i, I sure I, am I, I told mike basil a couple of weeks ago i go i'm a fan I, you know i'm one of your fans i go i, I admire the work you do i go you're, yeah. you're one of the best out there you know mm -hmm. um, you know one of the top uh cut men and you know it's always it's it's good to see you know see him work and you know so it's yeah. good. I, I, I see what you're saying with that but yeah hopefully we will get to work one of these days yeah started. that would be great i would love that and hang out and stuff um yeah we're getting close to the end of the, of the interview but i have something called uh 12 rounds in 60 seconds so it's uh you know it's 12 questions uh very you know just 12 questions just uh, say the first word that comes to mind and you know let's have fun with it so um you okay ready? You ready for 12 rounds yes all right here we go so uh, what's your favorite fight movie? Um, Rocky. Rocky, uh, Rocky, Rocky, the first Rocky. Yeah, the original. The original. Okay. And also, I like Cinderella Man, too. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, if you had to eat, or if you could eat three tacos, what flavors? Say that again? If you could eat three tacos, what flavors would you get? El Pastor, uh, Lingua, 
and uh, chicken. Oh. Pollo. Pollito. Uh, uh, dream car. Oh, um, 1970 Chevelle. MMA or boxing? Uh, both. Guilty pleasure. Um, sweets. Like dessert. <laughs> Your go-to movie, that one that never gets old. Oh, um, God, there's a, quite a few. Gosh, I'll skip that for now. I'll, I'll get back to the, at the end. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Arena you would like to corner in? Madison Square Garden. Favorite music artist or John, uh, genre? Um, you know, that's a tough one. I like everything. I like old school. I like rock. I like R&B. A little bit of everything. Uh, yeah. Your favorite holiday? Uh, Christmas. Uh, best walkout song you've ever been a part of? Oh, uh, Eye of the Tiger. If you could corner any fighter, past or present, who would it be? Past or present? Um, Muhammad Ali. Okay, you got a chance to answer that last question. Your favorite go-to movie? Or that movie that never gets old that Million Dollar Baby, I like that. Okay, well, that was 12 rounds in 60 seconds with uh, Cut Woman Carol. Uh, let me, uh, any shout outs you would like to give? Yes, um, um, War Tape, Mike Rodriguez, and, you know, for sponsoring me and, and providing me with some War Tape. I always appreciate that. Um, and I just want to thank all of the Cut Men and for everything that I've learned from them throughout the years and um, the promoters as well. Um, and let's see, just, and of course all the fighters for believing in me and trusting me to be in their corner and taking care of them um, during you know, war. When they go to war, I make sure that their hands are wrapped. We got those you know, war wraps going and um, so, and taking care of their cuts and everything. So it's important that um, I thank all of the, the coaches and the teams and the fighters for, for trusting and believing in me. Uh, where can people follow you? Or your social media, what's the best? Uh, yeah, where can they follow you? Follow you? Um, they can, I'm on Instagram, uh, Carol the Cut Woman. And um, I haven't been on Facebook for a while. I'll I need to get back on there, but um, I have a Carol the Cut Woman page and um, it would be Carol Syracusa on facebook on facebook okay and i know yeah. you're very active on on instagram i, I follow you on yeah instagram. and so good 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 Any you too thing? and also yeah last thing is um thank you for cut man for hire juan <laughs> for all of the supplies mm -hmm. i bought so many supplies from you um you know so and i'm always wearing you know the cut man for hire wrist the, with yeah, you know the or the wrist with, yeah, yeah no thank you and, uh, and i use uh, stitches i uh supplies as well as you know his in swell and uh the other wristband so uh thank you for for that thank you for the support um we always appreciate it on behalf of stitch and myself i mean thank you yes thank you for, you're for welcome. supporting the, the brands and and you know for you to think the fighters the you know the promoters all that that's that's big because you know it's a you being grateful, you know, for, for the work and for trusting, like you said, trusting you, the managers, mm -hmm. trusting you, you know, bringing you along, uh, you mm -hmm. know, telling what you, you know, what you do for the team. I mean, that's right. A really, really big thing. And for everybody else, they're just friends, family and such, just for supporting me for, you know, kind of taking on this crazy journey. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have told me in the past, like, oh my God, you're still doing that. Oh my God. You know, like they, some people may have said, you know, I don't know if you should do that. And it's like, no, I just keep chugging along. And, you know, so now people are, are all full supportive about it. And yeah. so I just appreciate all of the support that I get. You're like, this is a life. I'm doing this for life. Yeah. This is something yeah, I'm that's doing. for sure. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, so right? for all my haters, for all my haters, yeah, you're going to keep <laughs> seeing me. <laughs> Only one way, and that's to the top, right? That's right. No, no, no. That's you. right. Thank you, Carol, for uh, for your time today. You know, it was really good. You know, it's our first time talking, but um, it was nice having you on. And I'm sure that um, our listeners are going to enjoy or have enjoyed uh, this interview. And they've learned something, um, you know, from you and got to know you a little bit uh, better. So 
if they see you out there, uh, you know, working at MMA boxing, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they need to come up and say hi, and I'm sure you'll, you'll be happy to. That's right. Thank you very much, Juan, and I appreciate this interview. Appreciate your interest in having me, and um, I just want to thank everyone for their support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in uh, to Los Championship Rounds. Uh, God bless, and keep pressing forward. Thank you, Carol, and we'll be talking soon. God bless you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. God bless.